teach games development at college level. Uh, we use C Sharp and X and A. As part of that, I started actually looking at writing games for education. Um, and these are some of the games that I've written. We got just funding, so I got out of class for a wee bit to do it, so I didn't have to do it all in my own time. Um, and they make use, the main games we did for the last couple of years make use of the Xbox controllers to play games to the kids. It came about because I was playing uh, seen it on the Xbox 360. Some of you might have tried that. It's a movie trivia quiz game. Um, but you use the controllers to answer the questions. So I wanted to do that with my students, but I wanted to make up the questions. Um, and that's what we did. So we're using the controller. And, and for most of the games, we're just using the colored buttons on the controller as buzzers to answer the questions. We had a bunch of aims to develop collaborative games. You can use four wireless Xbox 360 controllers with a PC. Um, so you, I split the classroom into four teams. So it's group work as well. And they're collaborating together and they're using the controller. When I do it at primary level, I usually I actually tell them pass the controller around because they tend to fight over it. <laughs> so those are some of the kind of more fancy aims that we had. I'll show you what the actual games look like since we're short for time. So that's one of the games, that's a lovely question. And all they do is, <laughs> all they do is hit the button and the answer. You can see there that team three thought it was for drinking. Okay, team, teams two and four got it right and it does have the fastest finger element. So whoever hits the button quickest, they get a bonus five points. And you can use that, as you see there, you can also put pictures in. So you can do that for any subject. I've got people using it for French, people using it for maths. You can use it in any topic at all. There's some more questions of the maths question. And there's some of the kids playing it, so you can see how engaged they are in it. And there's the guy that couldn't stay in his seat. <laughs> that was the first game. Now, the first game we saw there was just purely questions, a bit like a pub quiz. It just asks you question after question. The next game is like your kind of Jeopardy challenge board one. The slight disadvantage to the teacher of that is you've got to organize your questions into categories, um, and you've got to decide which ones are easy, which ones are hard. And that when you do use the stick to move it about and they select it. So it's, it's, it's basically a challenge board one. The advantage of that one is you can just let the kids go away and play it. You can go do something else if you want to because they can work through that till it's done. There's some more. There's the questions coming up. There's one. I usually do end with a pop trivia one. So that's one in the Simpsons. And the one that isn't probably for everybody is that Xbox one, and that one is still, an still asking questions, but there is a kind of shooting, first person shooter element to it. So you control a robot and you shoot rockets, as you can see in the picture, they're at each other. When it hits one of your batteries, it will ask them a question, as you can see down there. They ask a question. If they get the question wrong, they lose one of their batteries. So that one probably is for the kids that are more into gaming um, and know how to use a controller, right? Because you do have to use both sticks and the triggers and everything to do that one. But some of them will really like that one. Some might not. And that was how it looked originally. You can see there with the R2 details. And there's some of my students playing that one. Usually they're not as close together. The Xbox controllers do have a good range. You could probably play it right from the back of this theater. So we just put them that close together so you could get them in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> OK. And there was, it was on the BBC News, the Michael Gove announcement, because the teacher, one of the teachers interviewed in that was a friend of mine, and he was playing the game in the background. And we had made one more based on the million pound drop. It's very much like the first game, except you can, act, you can put your, mon your points, it's not money, you can put your points on different answers, and you lose the points on the ones that are wrong. And since that, because I've got quite interested in that, we've been working, I've been doing some work with Microsoft, and we've been developing games for Connect. We made two games. First game is using is angles. So the idea of that, as you'll see in this picture, is it will say do 80 degrees, for instance, and you use your arm standing from the connect, and you draw 80 degrees with your arm, and it will actually then tell you if you got it right. Right, and if you don't, if the closer you get to it, the more points you got. So there's a competitive element to it there, as you can see. They're the two-player one, and they're doing it against each other, and the closer they get, the more points they get. So there's some kids playing that one as well. And we did add to it an element at the end. I, I tried to make it as much like Dance Center without it being dancing. So at the end of it, it does take a picture of them. So they do pose for the camera, as you can see the kid there doing. So this guy, he was laughing because he got it totally wrong, as you can see. 
And the first guy got it exactly right. So there's some kids posing, as you can see. So it's, it's fun as well, obviously. <laughs> and as I was doing that, we only finished this game last week. The teachers kept asking me, can you not do that for clocks? So we have done Connect Time. And it's very much the same idea, except they're using their arm to set the big hand and then the hour hand. So they're doing the, the hour hand and then the minute hand, sorry. As you can see there. So it takes a picture with and without the kind of augmented reality, if you want to call it that. So the games are all free. If you want them, you can download them from Microsoft or from my blog. They do require some uh, hardware. The Kinect you can get from Amazon for about £99. The controllers, all four of them, you can get for about £100. You do need a wee wireless receiver like that, which is about £10, £15 on Amazon, and then you use standard Xbox controllers. Quite a few teachers I know have just bought that, and then they asked their pupils to bring in their own controllers and do it that way. So it doesn't need to be expensive. There is other systems out there that let you do quizzes, but this is a lot cheaper. Okay, I think the Promethean voting system is about £500, so that's a lot cheaper. Um, that's where you can buy the stuff, and I'll just put up that. That's my blog, and all the software is on there. And I do have a session tomorrow, which will actually play the games this time, hopefully. <laughs> that's me.